And we're back with the VAC. Mate, it's good to see you. It's good oh, to hear you. fantastic to see you. Yeah, there you go. It's been a while. Uh, well, it hasn't really, but... Saturday uh, night. Saturday, Saturday night. night. Two, two days. Um, couple of days. Uh, we usually go a bit longer than that. But uh, how's things? All good in the hood? Oh, not bad. I mean, I was a bit, bit flat today, which is a bit sad because it's a public holiday. You should be up and about. I should be. But you're not. No, I'm not. I think I went too hard on the weekend. I think I right. got a bit excited. Got a bit too excited and now you have to sort of rein it in a bit. That's yeah. okay. That's what this day is for as well sometimes, you know. That's what it's for. That's what I was thinking. Sort of. It's not it, really. It, it, it's not, but you look forward to the long weekends thinking yeah. it's also expectation as well. Yeah. So you're thinking, oh, man, the long weekend. And then also disappointment of being at the end of the long weekend. Yeah, but then there's always, see, in this case, when you get the Monday off, you've got the short week coming up. So you still get to cling on to a short week next week. Next week? Well, yeah, because oh, week Tuesday. Yeah, okay, the coming Tuesday. I don't cling on to the short weeks. I don't like the short weeks because you just the reality have to get as is done. it's five days in four. I never have a good time in a short week. So that's another <laughs> another negative. Thank you for okay. that. Okay, yeah, I'll remind you of that, yeah. Uh, but I went a bit hard and I think it's – a part of it is just I haven't been drinking um, much alcohol and the like. I've actually been pretty clean, I think, coming into the Roto Channel Swim. And when I say clean, not not clean, but cleaner. Just just less. Just less. Way less. Yeah, because you've got an excuse not to. So it's easier to say no to alcohol <laughs> and the like. Got a and big swim coming up. You've always got a big swim coming up. I don't. I don't have any. I never. No, no you've the got first. the big swim coming up next year. Oh, I do. Yeah, now I do. I do. I'm what? 51 weeks away from it. Yeah, yeah. You're in camp. Yeah, but I had some drinks on Friday night for a friend's birthday. Uh, my tolerance is very low. Caught up with you Saturday night. Um, then, uh, you know, alcohol and... It got you. Last night, it got me. Yeah, and so now I'm just... And I wasn't... I had cut out coffee for three days late last week. So think about wow. this. I'm coming... I, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I didn't even have a coffee. Mm. <laughs> and then I came into the long weekend just going like thinking I'm immune to the effects of, you know... Everything. And, and now... No, it's okay. Like, and and because you haven't been drinking as much, obviously, tolerance, as you said, completely shot. So a little is a lot. It happens. Yeah. And I think I'm just sad about the long weekend being over and everything. So you're sad. I'm, I'm a bit sad. sorry for myself. But anyway, I'm sad. It's good. It's good to talk to you. I was looking forward to it. I was like, this is yeah, a good yeah, way yeah. to break out of the funk. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I hope I can help with that. Uh, yeah, start off with some more sadness, if you want. Oh, well, let's get it out of the way. Let's move on with. Let's start with all the <laughs> bullshit, and then let's. So the day after we spoke last week about these Archie's thongs, my mum comes over my house, and I said, "What are those? Are those Archie's?" And she said, "Yes." <laughs> She said they're fantastic. She gave them a shining review. But I said, because last week, I don't know if you remember, but I was pretty excited about the uh, the aspect of the no floppage. Uh, That's what, what, what we were talking mean? about. We but were talking about the flop? flip-flops. We were talking oh, about yes. the flip-flops yeah, and we how certainly the flip- were. I didn't know what we were on about though. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were, I we thought were they about. didn't flop. I thought they just did the flips oh. and no the flops. You have to explain I was convinced. the difference between a flip and a flop now. The, the flop is when the, the shoe sits on the ground while your heel's up. I thought they stuck to your foot, but they don't. No, they're just a, they're just a the regular thong. It's a regular thong. That's what, yeah. that's what I got shown. Yeah, regular said, thong. Just, other than, just other take than the fact steps. it's got an arch. They it's flopped got an around. Arch and yeah, the arch one, thing's great. One piece. Yeah. One piece. Everything's yeah. great. Yeah. Mum um, was very excited to tell me that there was a thong – you know, a blown thong, a busted up thong on their pathway that they take the dogs on for a walk. Oh, not There was a, a dead yeah. thong. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, the mm-hmm. plugs were removed. The plugs were completely gone. So they fell off. RIP, another pair of thongs. And um, at, the, at, um, at my brother's wedding in India, there was just about the time we had to do the, the, the dance as a family, our family dance. The family dance. Bollywood style, like you oh, have yeah, to do yeah. a number. Uh, my dad blows out his sandal just before. He had to go. I, th- I don't know what happened. I think it, he got. It, it wasn't an Archie's, was it? No, they were they were um, local sandals. Beautiful. I've still got mine. 
I uh, just got him back today, actually, because dad had, dad was hanging on to him, and I swear he was just gonna he was just gonna do it again, right? He's blown him out before. It's just gonna blow up his sandals. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's a loose rescue. unit, your dad as well. So those sandals <laughs> don't stand a chance. So they, I've seen I've seen a lot of R.I.P. sandals and thongs. Yeah. I'm glad to see someone's making a one piece. Could be 3D printed, arch support. Shining reviews otherwise, still flops. I'm still ready to do an ad for them if they want to sponsor us. <laughs> still ready for it. And but in terms of also housekeeping, I think we should, you know, because we start with the ad, so we start with the Archie's plug, right? Right. Yeah, which Good. you've done, the plug. Yeah, plug. Oh, no wow. No pun intended. Wow. The no I plug. believe you, though. I believe yeah. you that there was no fun intended, but it is a pun. <laughs> but, but for anyone that's made it this far in the, yeah. the podcast, they need yeah. to go into the, what do you call it, not the comments, the description, the video description, and see the bullshit that we talk about and they can find something. What my, what my proposition is to any listener yeah. is that there is something for everyone. Right. So what you're saying is it's an appeal. You're saying if you're thinking about turning it off right now, if, if you've had a gutful already – Right. Have a look through the description, see what the topics are covered, and realize that there might be something out there for you. Do you know people? There will be. There will. Be. That's my my <laughs> proposition. Is there will be something for you. Look through it. Just do it now. If you've got this far, look through it, and you'll wow. see something. There'll be. You know. Um, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to talk about. I don't this know. Is, we don't know. When <laughs> someone asked me, they go, "Oh, do you have an agenda?" And I was like, "An agenda? <laughs> no." Like, we just sit down. We just well, fire it up. Fire it up. We used to. I feel, and this always happens. I think in the beginning, you, you sit down. You've got maybe three or four things that you're thinking about bringing up on the show. Uh, and then it becomes sort of you rely on what, what sort of what's the Google trending searches? You'd be like, that'll be interesting stuff. You you could probably talk about that. And then you sort of stop doing that. And then you go, well, what's left? Well, now we're telling stories about blown out sandals and doing ads for companies who haven't hired us. But we started with that this time, so I don't know. No, so that, we've done that. I'm not sure if that bodes well for the rest of the episode. Because <laughs> normally we end up there, but we've started. We've opened with that. Got it. You got to start somewhere. You have to. You have to. I mean, I haven't checked the emails in a while, but that's other housekeeping. Save that for another episode. So we're on eighty-seven. I saw. Oh, is that a big number? Uh, it's. It is. What's the opposite of auspicious? auspicious just suspicious. Just suspicious. Yeah, just suspicious. It's a very just, suspicious just, number. <laughs> is it? Because it's thirteen from a hundred. Oh, so is this um? It, this would be a cricketer's nightmare. This, this episode is. eighty-seven is, that is right? a cricketer's nightmare. I don't think we're going to get a lot of viewers, so we shouldn't talk about cricket. Oh, don't talk about cricket because I don't think anyone that's interested in cricket. So if we talk, if we do a full one and a half hour special on cricket, yeah. yes. When although this is a lot the worst episode terms, to do it. Yeah, because what happens is that there's a lot of search terms that will come up that, that, that appeal to them. So things sure. like, let's say India, ICC, six, four, all these key terms that they would be searching or something. I don't know, best, whatever they search. You know. Yeah. But then they see episode 87 in the in the description. They're not going to click it. Wow. You think because so? It's what about the people who search for people who got out on 87, like compilation? They want to see all the 87s. They want to see everyone who faulted, why it's a suspicious number. They want to know the history. They want to see a bit of that. Then they go, wait a sec, what the fuck is the vacuous perspective? What the fuck episode 87? Jeez, that's weird, isn't it? Because I was just watching an episode about 87. Anyway. Okay, most, know common, most common score to get out on above 50. Uh I know this is a strange search term, but yeah, I think there's because think you're there's buying into that whole. Well, oh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. But for some reason, cricket has is a very, um, what's the word? Superstitious game. It is so, and there's lots of superstitions. It's not reflective of the population. <laughs> it's highly concentrated on cricketers. Well, I think this is. It, it, a lot of sports are mind games. Um, the slower the sport is, the more of a mind game it becomes because of all that downtime, you have to deal with your own noggin. 
So uh, golf is all about controlling your own devils in your head. That's it. Jeez. The golf, because golf is, the ball's just sitting there. Yeah, whack the it. The ball's just waiting to be hit. Yeah, hit it. You haven't got in many other jobs, do you, except for hit the ball? The ball is just sitting there. Think, again, in cricket, there's time in between balls. But you could there's be in the field too, all doing day. Doing nothing, doing nothing. And then that ball gets skied up in the air. Right? Oh, You've my God. You've been doing nothing. You've been out in a 40 degree day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then you've and done nothing where, all day, and then they expect you to take a leaping, full stretch, jumping, diving catch. It's blowing a gale on a this moment's no, coming oh, in from the outer nightmare. atmosphere. You don't know what day it is. It could be day three of a test match. <laughs> it could be okay. your third day. This is interesting. I was trying to find something about this eighty-seven business and superstition in cricket. Hmm. Great. Um, do you know who Lord Admiral Nelson is? Oh, of course. He's um, he's the son of um, uh, well, he wasn't a Lord Admiral. Nelson. Sorry, I gave him a promotion. I think it's Vice Admiral <laughs> Horatio Nelson. <laughs> oh no, I don't know that one. He's got a. You know, we'll come back to him. But anyway, Nelson uh, in brackets cricket. Nelson is a pick of uh, is, Nelson is a piece of cricket slang terminology and superstition. The name applied to team or individual scores of 111 or multiples thereof, known as a double Nelson, triple Nelson, etc. Oh, so, so 222, 333. Correct. Is thought to refer to a wicket. Is thought to? Yeah. Okay. That that's the first line on Wikipedia. Various scores oh, ascribed it to as referring in, to Nelson's uh, as in three, three major naval victories. Oh one, one, one. And that's W O N, W A N, W O N. Oh. <laughs> three victories. One, one, one. <laughs> Shit. There's some fucking weird guys. Or incorrectly in brackets to one eye, one arm, and one leg. Nelson never, in fact, lost a leg or an eye, although he lost the sight of one eye. Sorry. What the hell is this story? No, this guy. I thought it was about a vice admiral. I'm really confused. Yeah, this vice admiral is known for a really famous quote, which I don't know. Um, Oh, man. um, I, I know this vice admiral... Lord Horatio Nelson. Um, okay, I'll have to come back to him. That's my homework. I'm going to come back. back to him. But then there's this superstition in cricket, which now is lost on me. Anyway, I thought it was something to do with 87, but I can't keep reading this. <laughs> oh, here we go. The equivalent superstitious number in Australian cricket is 87, 87. Or the devil's number. Oh, the devil's number. Many. Many. Including That's a good commentators. Stat. Yeah. We're not going to name names. We're just going to say many. Yes. Including commentators and journalists. <laughs> yes. I think 87 is considered unlucky because it's yeah. 13 shy of 100. Yeah. However, an alternative thought is that it came to be known as the devil's number after Ian Johnson was dismissed for 87 while playing grade cricket. <laughs> and Keith Miller commented, that's funny. I once saw Bradman dismissed for 87. It turned out that Bradman had actually been dismissed for 89 and the huh. MCG scorers hadn't updated his last two runs before the dismissal. However, the superstition remained. Statistics have shown that more Australian batsmen are in fact dismissed on the numbers surrounding 87. Surrounding 87. That sounds like the biggest load of shit. They don't. Even, they can't even pin it down to eighty-seven. They're now just sit, and that, that's that's wait. Oh, there is a quote on here. Good. It's just one article from two thousand and nine. It, it says that's to, this is to back up the claim. Statistics have shown that more Australian batsmen are in fact just missed on the numbers surrounding eighty-seven. Yeah, wouldn't that just be because like you got to be scoring between fifty and a hundred to be doing well, and one of the numbers around there is about eighty. I thought that you might start getting nervous coming into the 90s because they call it the nervous 90s, but you're not in the I, 90s I would be yet. scared during the entire 90s and I think that was an uh, that was a thing that we used to think about 
and the commentators used to point out is, oh, it's he's in the 90s now. It's like they've just taken it back to, oh, he's at the 87 mark. There's probably another one. <laughs> Anything where you've just got to hit a boundary and you get to the 50 or the 100, yeah, it's bad times bears usually. You're nervous. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the 11th of November, 2011, uh oh. 11, test 11, match. 11, 11. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah. You see where this is going, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. In a test match between South Africa and Australia. Yeah. With the time at 11, oh, no. 11. No, it wasn't. And with South Africa requiring 111 runs to win. Whoa. Well, oh. The majority of the crowd and umpire Ian Gould did. Shepherd's leg raise Nelson for that minute with the scoreboard reading 11 colon 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 11 yeah right well what do you mean he held up a shepherd's leg I don't know what that means I don't know what that means what the hell are you talking about and there's no link to it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense and then they stopped the game the game was stopped this Wait a is- sec, everybody. Check out the scoreboard. This fucking weird. Look, everyone just chill. It's a weird thing to do. It's the cricket game's going. There's does- money on this and shit. And why does everyone know about this 11th thing? I've never heard of this before. I've never heard of it. Man, Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson, he's... He's made an impact. He has. Okay, here's another s- story that I don't know if it's going anywhere. Is it true? Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna go there. <clears throat> when someone says story, though, you just think, "Well, is it real?" <laughs> it's on Wikipedia, and there's no quote for okay. it. But in 2015, in the fourth test of that year's Ashes series, Australia were dismissed for 18 six ball overs and three deliveries. You guessed it: 111 legitimate deliveries. There were three what? no balls, but we don't count the no balls. Oh for 60. So they got dismissed for 60 off 111 bowls with Stuart Broad taking eight for 15. This was so at the time. So are we just saying these are the games where the demons are at work and all the other days where they play, they just take the day off? There's no fucking context in this. Uh, in this, It's, <laughs> it's cold. So the this Wikipedia article is Nelson in brackets right. cricket. Wow. It's all the Sounds examples good. of Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson's impact on the game. Wow. So this was at the time, so this is 660 of 111 deliveries. This mm. was at the time and still is the record for the shortest ever innings of a test, at least counting the legitimate deliveries. Because Bangladesh had a collapse against the West Indies in Antigua in 2018, lasting 112 legitimate deliveries and contained no no balls and wides. So that is a shorter... That has more legitimate deliveries, but this game had. I think this is just examples of one, one, one in cricket. This is how superstitious mm. they've become. Mm. But there's not that many examples. Cricket. There's not that many examples. Um, so it's a. Uh, it is rare still. You know what I mean? It doesn't happen all the time. This is why I don't know what it means. They're just looking for examples of one, one, one in cricket. They're just scouring the statistics. There's going to be a lot of statistics, right? Mm, of course. Regarding one, one, one. There's no mystery about this. No, and they play for five days. There's a Nelson lot of isn't stuff. haunting cricket from beyond the grave. Well, I'd say he definitely is. But yeah, let's stop. Let's stop talking about cricket. Let's talk about rugby league. Oh, I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know anything about rugby league. Can you tell me one rugby league player? Um, not a current one. I, d- I can't even tell you a previous one. Was that Billy someone, Billy fucking Frampton? Who, no, that's a, that's a Collingwood player. There was some dude that ran a lot uh, from the back yeah. line or something. Oh, yeah. Billy I someone. think I know who you're talking about. Are you talking about, did he play for Australia? Yeah, he did. I think okay. so. Is there an Australian? Of course there is an Australian NRL team. Yeah, because they play the other big Rugby nations, where's rugby played out of? It's only, isn't it? Only- I don't, I don't, I never know if someone's league or union though. I don't actually know. I think we mainly get to we see get, yeah, NRL yeah. on the telly. 
Well, um, their opening round was in Vegas on the weekend. That's right. So you heard that because I heard. Well, that. I knew that was happening. Yeah, and I was just you know because you think why? Um, it's not uncommon, but it is kind of fun. I guess yeah, it's trying kind to get of some fun. more exposure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, more, more, more people. They did a season double header. You know, the the Chooks first, the Gators, or whoever they are. I don't know. But did anyway. you see any highlights? No, I didn't know. But I saw it come up when I was at the gym. They have the sport channel on in the background. Yeah, and they said they had in like big letters, and they had the, the broadcasting team was there, and they said in the in the uh, banner on the screen that the NRL is in Vegas for the opening round. Yeah. Um. I actually think it's going to pop off in the US because really? you, you know how we talked about in the NFL gridiron or NFL, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know how they get really excited when they do a yeah. lateral pass? Oh, really, right. In those special plays. Right. Imagine when they lay eyes on NRL. Yeah, it's all lateral passes though. Yeah, yeah, when they do three in a row, they're going to lose their fucking minds. They're going to be so upset. They're going to love it for about the first 10 minutes. And then they'll realize they're going they to be like they're going to be like forward. Yeah, they're going to be like this is amazing. Look at all the laterals. And then after 10 minutes they'll be like, "Man, I wish someone would just run forward so they could like ditch it to him and get the touchdown." It's like, oh, "No, you can't do that. You have to it always has to be backwards." This game's silly. I'm trying to go that way. Why can't I kick the ball? You know, they they just they'd hate on it so hard. I reckon they they like the first play, yeah. And then when you get to six and they just have to give the ball back. I mean, I don't like that. But actually that's the same as NFL. You get four you get four attempts at getting to the the ten yard line. You know, yep. And then it's yep. a turnover. So yep. in that respect, it's actually there are some similarities. It's it's more similar to that than it is to AFL, let's say. It's closer to NRL than it is to AFL. Mm. Way closer. Yeah. A and lot the of the headline. mechanics are the same. Um, I don't think they'd understand the scrum because I don't think even people who play the game understand the scrum. Well, in, in, in NRL, it's just for show because it's just to collect. They don't do a proper scrum in NRL. They do a, um, a pseudo scrum where they just play. They don't actually collide. They don't clash together. Yeah. They just group players there so that there's more space on the field elsewhere. Yeah, but you remember how it used to go down. Don't they just like sit around? Just basically slamming their heads into each other. That, that's in Union. But that's Union. Union, they actually they're they're trying to contest push the ball. it around. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to. Um, put, if they can push the opposing team, it always teams. looked like a formality to me. It always well, looked like a formality. It's a complete to formality me. in NRL, yeah. I think. Anyway, that's my understanding. I, mean, I don't know. So anyway. if you if you can't you can't recover the ball as the defensive team from a scrum from a scrum, um, it is a rubber stamp that you're going to collect the ball and do something with it. If you, it is a it. rubber stamp. It's a rubber if, stamp. If you put it under there, if you do the little throw under their legs, you're getting it back. They, I don't even think you're allowed to contest as the other team in the scrum <laughs> in NRL. You know, I'm saying that I have no fucking idea. I have I'm no pretty idea. sure. No, I'm I saying no it with idea. confidence. I know it was though, in Vegas can, on the weekend, but I don't know yeah, much else. I can tell yeah. you can't. I can tell you don't know the rules, which gives no. me a lot of confidence to say whatever I want. Right, but you know, in the sense that there's five or six downs, you can kick the ball through the big sticks. It's pretty similar to NRL, NFL. Yeah, it's only yeah, one yeah. letter. <laughs> the headline I saw in the banner on this uh, on this, t- uh, this this sports broadcast was NRL's plan to sell NRL to the world. Wow! And I thought wow. they can't even sell it to Australia. Wow! Well, they can't to WA people because we we like football more. That's just how it is over here. I in thought the, it was a the, bit rich. The Their East. plan to sell it to the world. And I was like, well, we've start done that. local, start local. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I see your point. I can't even tell you an NRL player. Yeah, we got a problem. We do. With the, the majority of the NRL players, that names that I know are because they were in the paper for other reasons, like punching a dude or getting caught with something or that sort of thing. Those ones, remember them. Yeah, they never tell you any good news about the NRL players, like, you know, all the, the trees they plant or the... Um, they've got to be planting a couple of trees. The they've got to be doing something. They cook. Yeah, yeah something. they've got to do something. 
They've got to be doing something. They need to contact be. the Good News Network that you yes. get emails from. Yes. And say, yes. can you run some good news about some NRL players, please? Yes, because we're sick of all the bloody negative stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what their plan is to sell it to the world, but I think the laterals will be there. I would love it if AFL was a massive international sport. Like, I would love that. Oh, we, we would get... We would start getting dominated by the US pretty early. They're doing How very well in soccer, be? actually. The US is doing very, very good in soccer. Their popularity is taking off. Yeah, I think it's to do with that. I think it's to do with a lot of the kids that made it. That would have it would have been popular for a long time. They've kind of figured out, hey, you can play soccer in the United States, so that's good. One thing that's working in soccer's favour is the lack of head clashes. Don't you think? Because NFL is starting to get hated on a little bit. Like, mm. if you're a parent of a child, are you are you encouraging them to get to be a professional head banger? Um, no. You can't. You can't. Can you? Can you? <laughs> you, can't. you can't. No matter how like uh, strong their head looks, you can't be doing that. But. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard for me to reconcile being a massive fight fan. But ironically, I think that there's a bit of CTE damage. I heard that when they head the ball. Yeah, that's soccer, true. That's true. Yeah, because they do that repetitively. Like in the Correct. UFC, you might only get like, you know, three bad head knocks in your career or something, right? But then uh, they're catastrophic. Mm, <laughs> three. I love that. I love that. You're comparing like I try headering to a ball. That oh, that's so good. It's like, it's like yeah, I mean. I mean, if you if you practice your headers for like a day, that's like doing a full fight training camp and then getting your head caved in. It's the same thing, just over us. It's just little ones, little ones accumulating, accumulating. Yeah, 100%. I think it's I think it's what it is. It's a matter of total force absorbed by your head. And what I mean by that is, I know you're not much of a gym junkie. <coughs> no, I'm not. No, but if you do ten. One kilo oh. reps. So you've got a one kilo weight, okay? Yeah. And you do 10 reps on your bicep or something. Great. Okay, you've moved a total of 10 kg. Your your bicep has has done has moved 10 kg worth of weight. Okay. <laughs> or you could do this is not this is not um, medical oh. advice <laughs> or this is not how to get big at the gym. This right. is just uh, one way of thinking about it. Or you could do one rep of a 10 kilo weight. And you've also right. moved 10, 10 kilograms. Okay. I reckon that's and that's that's approved, is it? Um, well, that that's like sti- you know the statistics, the, the numbers. That, the numbers don't lie. I'm not saying it's better for, obvi- yeah. It, I'm not saying like your muscles are going to be better. Anyways, what I'm saying is you've done ten kilos of work with your arm. Cool. Okay. Now, if Nagano punches you in the face once. Right. How much force can he punch with again? He got the world record. Oh, right? Yeah, I don't what know. Do I think it's is? like the equivalent of a truck or something. You yeah. know, it's that sort of stuff. Let's say 200 kilograms, okay, I don't know, of weight. It gets punched into your head. Right, great. Okay. okay. Um, I know that you'd be, you look, you'd, you need Newton or something for four. Anyway, but yeah, let's just say that it's the equivalent of 200 kilograms of, of weight. So now. We don't have the numbers. But we don't it, have the numbers. This is yeah. my point. Is I'm getting to, I am getting my point. I've been, I've been struggling today to actually get to points, haven't I? But now if you header the ball, let's say one header is like 50 grams. Right. Yeah. Okay. But you do, I need to do the math. Let's make it easier. Let's say it's. And let's, let's be clear that a punch from Garno. That's that's a life ender in the sense that like if if I was just to take that or or your everyday soccer player, um, we're going down. We're gonna we're gonna get a pretty heavy concussion. You might have a really strong chin. Me, <laughs> you, yeah. you might. You oh might. yeah, yeah. It could be my time to shine. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. And so if you do, if you let's say one header, I know it depends on the velocity of the ball coming in. Let's say it's an average of two hundred grams. An okay, yeah. an average. Now, if you do that five. Uh, a thousand times, right? Your head has absorbed two hundred kilograms worth of weight. <laughs> so understood, understood. I think that 
I think that these soccer players are in some real danger because as right. they continue to head of this ball. Right. Right. Headers are pretty rare though, right? Aren't they? Are they rare? No, that's like that in training. I'm sure they're headering it all over the place. Oh, they, yeah, no, it wouldn't be in the training anymore. You save it for game Maybe day. Game day, game day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, no, I, think they stopped, I think they stopped the kiddies from headering it because they, they just thought this is an unnecessary thing. Oh, did they? Yeah. Have you seen that? It reminds me of um, that South Park episode with Suck Castable with um, yeah. Randy who yes. and inadvertently makes sports safer by changing the rules of the NFL. Yeah, it's great. Incredible. And Butters becomes oh, so the, 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 the Brady the equivalent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the goat, the goat <laughs> of Suck Castable. He's such a nice little kid. Yeah, because it mainly is passing around balloons and complimenting people and giving them hugs. That's why Butters is That's like perfectly placed. That. Yeah, yeah. And he was loving it because it was the first time he was a star. So he was loving it. They're all loving it. That, that is very good. I haven't seen any new South Park. Have you seen any new stuff? I'm sure it's great. I haven't watched much of the new stuff, but I'll get there. Do you know if you can get it in Australia yet? Because yeah. the old stuff. Yeah, I think it's on Paramount Plus or one of the sub, one of the scribes. I didn't know Paramount Plus was a... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to just look it up. Do you know what's annoying... Hey, speaking of looking stuff up, we need to go see June. I know. I, I thought about that today. We need to book it in. Um, I'd even go next weekend. I don't know what I've got on, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. We have to. We have to see it. We have to see it. Um, you haven't read the book, have you? So you don't really know what's going to happen. No, nah, no. Nah, but I, I sort of, I know. I, I know too much. I've mm. done my own homework. And sometimes straight into places. I'm pretty good at if I'm watching a video and they go, hey, I'm going to talk about this now. I'm like, okay, I don't want to hear about that. I'm pretty good at stopping myself from spoiling like a movie. But broadly, That's great self control. Yeah. But broadly, I know sometimes I'll just get stuck in. You know how there's Wikipedia, but there's Wikipedia for things? Like there's a Star Wars Wikipedia that's just filled with that information. You won't find anything about, you know, Hitler or Stalin or anything in Star Wars Wikipedia. You know what I mean? No, it's not in there. No, it's not the Marvel Universe or anything. <laughs> yeah. Or the, although there would be one for that as well. That's yeah. where I got a lot of the info from for the other one where we talked about uh, historical people who are in the Marvel Maku Cinematic universe comic book series so like the um in that wikipedia for june i just get lost reading the history i just get lost in oh who was the emperor before this guy Mm. oh who was this before this guy like i always read too far so yeah i get better at it the closer it comes to release date like usually a month out i'll stop watching anything about it well, wait. all I, um, what we all know is going to ride a worm, and oh. I, for one, am looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, be because fun. it's going to look ridiculous. This is a problem that one of the old, the old June, the nineteen eighty four June had, is you have to ride a giant worm. How do you do that with the tech that they had in the eighties? Like, why did they take that movie on? <sighs> look, uh, they were doing a lot crazier stuff. They were doing, you know, monkey magic. He's sitting on a cloud. You know, if you said to him, you know, Monkey Magic was made, I don't even know when, but it would have been the 70s. Is Monkey Magic a movie? No, you know, the guy who um, surfs around on the cloud. It was on in the mornings uh, after sort of rage. Monkey Magic. No, no. Come on, man. Uh, It was like dubbed, uh, funny as hell. Uh, He had to ride a cloud around as a special effect, but it's just... Him it's not a on, a, on a cotton wool ball. No, no, no. It's live action. Live okay. action. All right. I'll have to check it out. I'll I don't have to find that. out what streaming is. That a figment of your imagination? Is that real? No, no, no. That's a legit TV series. Um, it was on after recovery, whenever we were uh, in our teens and onwards. Um, it reminds me of the moon off. Oh, I can't remember what the TV show is. 
Man, my what? brain is like a sieve. Hey? What do you mean, the moon? The moon. What's that? What's that? It's a really trippy TV show. It's English. And at some point there's like a moon, but it's like a it's like a cream face. It's like a face covered in cream. It's like, oh, the moon. Yeah, isn't that the boosh? The boosh, the mighty isn't boosh. The, the mighty boosh? Yeah, I don't yeah, know, because yeah. I think you were talking about a guy flying around on a cloud and it just reminded me of something as ridiculous yeah, as the mighty yeah. boosh. The mighty boosh is fantastic. Yeah, no, I, I've, um, I came around to it. I didn't, I didn't like it the first time I saw it. I actually hated it. And then I and then I liked it after there that. There are some moments. I think some of it is a bit of a stretch. There are yeah. some excellent episodes. Always the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the uh, it's the not the main guy, but his his friend. <laughs> I need their names. I think it's Howard. Howard. Howard is one of them. Howard's the one. Howard on Moon stand. is his name, isn't it? Isn't it yes. Moon? Yes. Um, and the other one, what's his name? What's the main character's name? I'm working on it. The one played by, uh, what's his face? I I know his name. I see him all the time on those British talk shows, you know, the uh, the panel shows. Yeah, Vince Noir. His name in the the show. Howard Moon and Vince Noir. And, And Vince Noir is played by, what's his name? It's gonna kill me. I don't know. I don't oh, know. Oh come on, he's How super famous. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I've sorry, sorry. Na- I've seen his name a billion times. <laughs> Noel Fielding. Noel Fielding. Oh Noel my god. Fielding. Okay. Oh my god. What's he done? He looks familiar. Oh, was he? Oh, he was in. He was IT in the crowd. IT crowd. Yeah. yeah, he's the goth dude. He was living. Yeah, the-, the goth dude living in the the, yeah, the battery room was- or something. The generator room. Yeah, he's just been a bit of a stalwart of English comedy scene for a while, just kicking around, um, doing his thing. Yeah, he's he's like he hosts character. Bake Off. He hosts Bake Off in Britain, which is like one of the biggest shows is it? in Britain. Is something about Why baking cakes. It's called the Great British Bake Off or something, and people love it. Bro, I had he no idea. has done so much television. Who? Noel Fielding. No fielding. It's a list. No, He's I mean he might have so popped much. up, and it might have been you know he might have popped up in a few things. Give me, give me the, give me the highlights from the from the TV credits. I don't know where to start. Uh, did he? He's been in a bunch of music videos. Was he well. in Garth Marenghi's Dark Place as well? He must have popped up in that somewhere. I'm not familiar with much of it. Oh, okay, it's like QI. Okay, so I mean, no, that doesn't count. Yeah, I know, but they've included it. No, it's a lot. Um, you're you quite like Richard Lewis, don't you? Yes. Or well, like, I like him. um, I like Curb Your Enthusiasm, and that's probably where I saw him the most. God, I haven't watched any of his comedy. Actually, that's not true. Isn't he is the bad guy in Robin Hood Men in Tights? That Matt Mel Brooks movie. He is. He yeah, so he played the one with the go- the guy with the mole. Yeah, it's great. And you know he passed away from he a did. heart attack. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not going to cover any more deaths on this show because I'm sick of it. Because I feel like I'm an obituary, right? But it's because their name comes up during the week, and I th- you know it gets me going, gets me of thinking course. about them. And I need to watch some new Curb as well. These are all the things I need to watch. The new South Park. I haven't seen the last few seasons of Curb. I think they're on. Yeah, season I need to 12. catch up on that. This is the last season, so at least uh, you won't be playing catch up forever. It is the last season, is it? <laughs> He's said that, but he said that before. So I thought it had we'll already see. ended a long time ago. I thought it ended at the end of season <sighs> seven. Still going. Still crushing it. Yeah. I didn't know Richard Lewis was known as the the Prince of Pain. I didn't know that either. Is there a reason for that? He did a lot of self-deprecating humour. Absolutely. Always joking about his own issues. Which is a good one. That's a good one to start. That's a good place because you're not offending anyone. 
you can just be as brutal as you want. We should really just go at ourselves. Well, well, yeah. Well, that's an easy target though nowadays. Um, well, why is that? Because self-deprecation is so common now, right? Yes. <laughs> but, everyone's got um, on to it. Everyone's got on to the fact you can just bash yourself. Oh, no one's nice yeah. to themselves anymore. No one's nice to themselves with their diet. But no, no one's, one's not nice to themselves for comedic value. They're not doing it for comedy. Usually it's because of psychological issues. What do you mean? Well, no one's like uh, being self-deprecating um, in, this, in the way that you're saying for fun or comedy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do we just treat us? We, everyone treats themselves like a fucking garbage chip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> if you, what you need to do is treat yeah. yourself yes. like you're a patient in a hospital. Right? Really? Yeah. You think that's the way to go? Yeah, so it's in, in the sense that the things you would tell, so if, if someone, right. the a things you would tell someone right. that right, you should, right. you know, if you go like, hey, you should, um, you know, you should, maybe you should do this or do this, you know, you should do it yourself. Yeah, it's probably something that starts in a good place, right, but yeah. ends up being, well, you made a pass yesterday, so do that again, I guess. You know, it probably started off as, hey, that was great. Wait. <laughs> then it gets to, well. I, I got yeah. by doing this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly. And, and it was far more fun. Yeah, exactly. It was far more fun. <laughs> <laughs> but what about your health? But what about your life? You know, it's a balancing act. Now, there's literally nothing on this, you know, mm. the fact that the Good News Network is providing me with nothing is not helping. Oh, is there no good news? Well, it is, but it's kind of, when I when you sign me up to the Good News Network, I think the best thing that it is, there's a little quote up the top of every little email. There'll, there'll be a little quote. That's nice, but the stories are meh. Yeah, and see, the fact that they're so bad is becoming a story for me because I could oh, rattle okay, these off okay, to you now okay. and you'll just think, ah, oh, yep, boring, yep, boring, but the quotes are fun. You want to hear a quote? Yeah. Okay, so I'll just pick a random one. Okay. Uh, the roots of all goodness lie in the soil of appreciation for goodness. <laughs> The soil of appreciation. No, the roots. The roots of all goodness. Yes. Lie in the soil of appreciation for goodness. That's the Dalai Lama. Deep. Oh, was it? That's deep, man. Soil's complex. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, soil. Oh. There's a lot going. Soil is like a, an abstract concept. You say soil, and everyone's like, "Oh, they do." But the soil is comprised. Oh, it's so complex and nuanced. There's infinite amounts of, of bacteria and insects yep. all interplaying and exchanging resources. But we think just soil is just a blight, like, oh, dirt. It is, there is, it is full of life and complexity. Mm, of course. And then from that soil is the ability of plants and things to grow. And plants are out of control crazy. Yeah, and goodness. And goodness. Don't forget the goodness. There's so goodness is, in the soil. Is the problem you're having with the good and the bad news that the, the maybe not the importance, but the, the level of the good news is not achieving the level of the bad news? It's for the strengthened pathways. I, have a, I would have a strengthened pathways towards the negative. We all do, and I and it, it's hard to get me excited about um, these headlines that I'm getting from the Good News Network. Because what we need to do is, you know, how you do when you're trying actually, to figure this is, out. The, now that I'm reading through, I was going to try and shit on them. I'm just starting to go. Oh, actually, some of this is pretty cool. Yeah, what but, else you got? Because I'm struggling here. Well, there's there's one that says the greatest conservation story ever told isn't really being told. That sounds pretty interesting because there's a picture of a pristine beach. Then I scroll down. It says NFL scores touchdown for renewables. The Super Bowl was 100% solar powered. What do you think about that? <laughs> that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. 
That's what I thought, yeah. I thought you'd like that one. I didn't think they would. It's such a strange thing to do. It was 100% solar powered. So what, there's some grid somewhere. So they've cleared the land of all the plants and they've covered the soil with no, solar it panels. No, looks, it looks like the stadium is a massive solar panel. Okay. That's what it looks like in the picture. But the picture could be a load of shit. Uh, seek the lofty by reading, hearing, or seeing great work at some moment every day. How do I do that? How do I? By reading, hearing, or seeing great work at some moment. So I have to find will... some great work. Where's a great work of literature? And that seek the lofty. So, it's, you know, if, you, if lofty is something that you're interested in having, which I assume it is, Sounds you good. would seek yeah. the lofty yes. by reading, hearing, or seeing great work at some moment every day. Who said Thornton that one? Thornton Wilder. Do you reckon these, like, for example, Dalai Lama gets quoted quite uh-huh. often? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Misquoted. Else he's done, yeah, or misquoted. Probably. Do you think, does he just sit around thinking of these parables? These uh, phrases? Yeah, yeah, of course. You have to, you have to put in the time. So he sits around thinking, because he, he, people know that they're going to be looking to him for good news and, and nice words. A lot of pressure on him to come up with some good ones. Yeah, he must have had some trash ones as well. Ones that he just, that never took off. He said them, no one liked them. He never said them again. He'd have a few of those. Okay, worst quotes. Oh, here's a Swedish proverb. Here's a good one. It says, shared joy. Luffingham. Luffingham. I'm talking about joy. It says, shared joy is double joy and shared sorrow oh. is half sorrow. Oh. Mm. That's profound. That's nice. But that's just that's just been credited to Swedish proverb, whoever that guy is. Oh, that's a good. I like the shared joy is double joy because I think it is important to get around the successes of other people. It's nice. I think too too often people, particularly at work, they're jealous ah. of the success of others, and they they're not really they don't really get around it. No, no. There's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons for that. But let's let's share some joy. Yep. Got any more? What have you got some? Oh no, I've got um top ten worst quotes. Oh, cool. What are these misquotes or just bad quotes? I think they're just bad quotes. Um, I mean, I don't even know if to get on the bad quote list, that's pretty impressive. If you never got on the good quote list, but you can get on the bad, that's pretty good still. I'll take it. You're on the list. I yeah, reckon exactly. we could be on the bad quote. If people actually found, dug through our material and found some of the quotes, we could be on there. Oh, yeah. I don't know who Robert Schuller is, but never cut down. Sorry, I don't want to misquote him. I don't want to misquote no. him. Never no. cut a tree down in the winter time. Right. Never make a negative decision in the low time. Never make your most important decisions when you are in your worst moods. Wait, be patient. The storm will pass. The spring will come. What the fuck was that? No fucking idea. How did that get number 10? Who's voting on this? And it almost sounded like sound advice. It almost sounded okay. <laughs> Well, this is the thing. There's, and there's not a lot to know. What... Yeah, well, it's, there's not a lot you can disagree with in there where it's just saying, hey, all good. Wait it out. You're fine. I've just gone straight to number one. Good. For yeah, these yeah, bad yeah. quotes because that was terrible. Yeah, as far as bad quotes go. This is from Who Robin. voted on this? Yeah, go oh, on. It doesn't say. It's Robin Williams. Oh. I used to think that the worst thing in life was to end up alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is to end up with people who make you feel alone. Uh, that's a good one. That's a good quote. That's a good one. You know what? It's using the word worst. It's got the word worst in all these quotes. So it's just taking. So nothing about it the, is worse. <laughs> it's the best worst quote. It's the best quote. Oh, it's the number the one quote, quote using the word worst. 
Oh, okay. Man, we got to get this. Uh, it's the meta search. But yeah. You know, I was worried about Population Crush. Well, yeah, you're worried about it. A few other people are worried about it. There's a couple of people who are worried about it. Are you worried about it? I'm worried about it again. Oh, I'm not worried about it. No, I got worried about it because South Korea is worried about it. Right. South Korea has had the lowest birth rate in the world for a number of years and they keep beating their own mark. Okay. Last year it fell another 8%. To Eight. To 072 so that wow. is so anything under one is population decline. Anything under anything two above is population decline because you need well, each woman to have two offspring. Because no, there's no a that doesn't take into account um, immigration. No, it's not taking into account immigration. But so that 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 point seven two yeah that is yeah, that, that is the average that's the number average number of children a woman has in her lifetime and they say for a population to hold steady that number needs to be 2.1 this is what the article said that made me so ours wouldn't be holding steady then either our birth rate i don't know what ours is it's no it's not um it's not 2.1 i don't think it is what do you reckon it is it'll be around that i reckon i reckon it'll be around 2 point i reckon it'll be 2.2 i'm gonna go with 2.2 i think we've got a healthy birth rate i'm gonna it's 1.58 shit so apparently if this trend continues, Korea's population yes. is expected to half by 20, uh, 2,100. Yeah. So in 50 years' time, so yeah. 2070, the number of working people would have halved, working age people, sorry, the number of working yep. age people would have, the pool eligible to take part in the country's mandatory military service, which is important when you're bored in North Korea, would have shrunk by 58%. And mm-hmm. nearly half the population will be older than 65. That's pretty terrifying for South Korea. They've, they've called it a, um, a national emergency. Yeah. They shower it, it cash is, on it couples is, that it have kids. Well, it is a it is a, a legitimate thing, right? It certainly is. Yeah, for their future. Yeah, and it's a lot of it's a big fear for Elon and her, the other guys, right? Because this is happening all around the Western world. These yep. these trends of dropping birth yep. rates are, yep. are not uncommon. This is just the worst. This is potentially. This, yeah, the, the right. future of other countries. Yes. That's why we need the robots. Ah, uh, see, this isn't factoring in all the South Korean robots they're going to make. Robots. We need robots. We need more robots. Yeah, they don't need the yeah. population. Right. I reckon this is this is my call. You're onto it. Without having Succumb to the through. AI, just let the AI sort it out, put the robots in. Robots. Put the robots in charge. That's that's been my thoughts for a while. Because we have actually wait, we had our chance. We had our chance. All We're we not very good was, at we, it. We only had to procreate. That's all we had to do. We couldn't fucking do that. We couldn't figure <laughs> it out. The robots need the robots. We had one job. We're lucky we got to the point of developing AI whilst we had, you know, an economy. So we've got to this point. Thank fuck we've developed AI so it can carry the economy well, forward. Well, 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 well. It could be a product of. A product of the decline, you know what I'm saying? So there's certain technologies you need to you need to start working on if this is an eventual outcome that could be foreseeable. You go, well, how do we how do we fix that? Well, uh, what's your second biggest fear, Elon? Is is just uh, artificial intelligence and sort of Terminator Two scenario? Well, what we're going to need is sort we're of need humanoid. Of we're going to need some humanoid-looking robots who think for themselves uh, and perform tasks to help us because we have no workforce. So, you're worried. Elon's between a rock and a hard place. Isn't yeah, he? pick your poison. His pick, two greatest fears are. 
an eventuality which we're going to have to face, basically. And when I mean, what I say when I say about well, something we're going to have to face with the AI side of it is there will be portions of um, life that will be done by the AI. You know, in the not too distant future, you'll just have 100%. things done for you, and mm. you'll go, "Well, this is nice." Hope they don't rise up and kill us one day because uh, it could be a legitimate – if we gave them control and they said, look, in order for us to uh, for, to do this into law and sign it off to make sure that we've got the AI in charge, we have to do all this stuff, they do it and it instantly shuts us out. It just goes, right, close the doors. Close, cl- close the doors. I'm doing some country stuff in here. Uh, we're in trouble basically because we're in the end game now. <laughs> And you and you've always said you've always said that it's far more likely to encounter sort of another civilization's technology than to actually encounter them themselves. Meaning there could be some yeah. probes out there that are, are out there zipping about, um, and it 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 could be similar with uh, with that. They're certainly, the ones that are going to continue on, and maybe they'll continue we, we the space made, race. We are made for this world and this world alone. We yeah. are not made to be fucking around on planets with other, you know, different levels of gravity and yep. space and all that. We're just not supposed to be there. We, <laughs> our job, our job is to give birth to to the AI. It is. I mean, it is. Oh, to the AI. It is. It has to be the. <laughs> It, it has to be. It, it's what we. It's we all got all the materialistic tendencies and the greed and the. We always need the new, the newest phone and the shiniest thing, and we're gonna develop artificial. Well, we always we always knew that human beings were capable of designing the means to destroy ourselves. In the sense that, yes, we created nuclear bombs when they were setting them off. They didn't know what was going to happen. They were a bit. They said, "There's a near zero chance that we won't blow up the stra- the the atmosphere." So, shall we try it out? Yeah, give it a crack. So, it's not. It just wasn't. It wasn't meant to be that it way was reckless, with the wasn't AI. It? The bombs but with the bombs. Oh, of course, bombs are very reckless. Yeah, of course. They just didn't. They had no idea what that what was going to happen. <laughs> Love it. I'm trying to think of other reckless things we've done. We de- we developed, we smashed atoms together and developed a miniature transient black hole, and that in, at CERN, at the super, the what do you call it, the Large Hadron Super Collider, yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what did they do? They made a black hole. Uh, yeah, it was only very, very. Um, apparently, they smashed them yeah, but together. It it's, feels it's like if you get the numbers wrong, it feels like if you get the numbers wrong with the black hole creation size. You know, in my brain, oh yeah, it just it just zips up the whole planet into a yeah, into a garbage that's bin. It, that's it. Game and throws it in, throws yeah, it away. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure that there are um, uh, black holes out there in the universe that were artificially created by mm. um, wow living creatures that fucked because up we and can they do it. Right, caused a collapse. They they caused a black hole. And they're like, oh, well, we fucked it. That's it. But isn't isn't there a black hole at the center of every um, galaxy, uh, supermassive. That's yeah, a supermassive that's, black hole. Yes, yeah. I think it, it's uh, it's at least theorized, if not proven. That's right. Yeah. That, that's what is, is kind of holding it all together. That's right. It's almost like the sun at the center of our solar system, where the yeah. planets are rotating around. That there is a essentially a black hole at the center of all the ga- all the other all the galaxies, and the spiral arms of the galaxies swirl around that. Ridiculous. Makes no sense at all. Sounds made up, basically. So in South Korea, they're trying to find creative solutions to solve this birth rate issue. No, don't want to go down the robot road. All right, back to the regular way. For now. Has worked for a while. Yeah, they have to stick with the (laughs) tried and proven. (laughs) What would you do? I mean, what they've done, they've exempted men from serving in the military if they have three children before turning 30. It is reasonable to have three children before 30. It is reasonable. Possibly, yeah, But it means possible. you pretty much have to make it your main goal you in have to life commit. is to you settle have to down and, yeah. And, and, yeah, and to have children. But you had two, you're 29, you're like, ah, come on, like, give it, ah, <laughs> what are you doing to me? Well, they've comped it, IVF treatment as well. So IVF is completely paid for by the government. That shit is expensive. 
Yeah, that's that's probably a lever they can pull. Yep, that's definitely a lever they can pull. Baby bonuses, that and sort of that stuff. stuff. Free taxis for free taxis. I don't know who for, but yeah, that's apparently for the kid, in presumably, the mix. or maybe the pregnant mother or something. <laughs> I don't know. They're just driving people around. Probably driverless taxis at this point. <laughs> Gotta let the robots start taking over somewhere. Well, there's not enough population to be doing the other things you know if you're running out of a workforce yeah you don't want all your workforce doing all those menial tasks yeah of course if the robots do take over i've got a plan actually i haven't told you okay because apparently one thing that they is very very difficult to get a robot to do is to fold washing Apparently folding washing. So you washing. could get a gig as a, a, washing, a folding washing guy. You could get a gig doing that? Yeah, I've been keeping up my my washing folding. I don't let the wife do it. I keep my skills up because I know But that if you had a robot in the house that could do it, you wouldn't let it do it? No, we're not going to get to the point of having a robot that can do it. The robot, robot we're doing everything else, driving, um, you know, constructing walls. Right, but that job's safe, that home job's safe. It's too, there, it? there's too, there's too much dexterity and nuance involved in the clothing. Oh, really? No. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Mm. That's my backup plan <laughs> if all else goes okay. into it. Yeah, they'll keep the people who are good at folding washing. Um, if you want to know where we're at for AI, can I give you a link or can you just open up your web browser? Yeah. Um, so it's called S O R A. Yeah. Open AI, like open AI, one word. This is and where then you'll see it. you'll see a you'll see a, a website that sort of starts with um, birds flying through like a green. You see that? It says creating video, video from text. Yeah, you yeah, seeing create, this? yeah, yeah. That's what I've got. Yeah, yeah. And you're seeing like a video behind there, right? Oh, it just started. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It looks like paper airplanes. Yeah, it does. Okay, scroll down. Yeah. What have we got? I've got a woman that looks like she's in the Matrix uh, in a red dress, but she's mm. Asian with a leather jacket on. Yeah. And she's walking this through is completely that looks like AI generated. Is this is completely AI generated video. All of it. Wow, it looks like Japan. Like it well, it is. Look at the prompt. A stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm glowing neon and animated city signage. She it wears a black a leather jacket, a long red jack, yeah. jack uh, a long red yeah, a long red dress and black boots. So that's all it gave it, well, uh, presumably, and it gave it spat oh, out that's this, the right? Oh, a stylish woman. This is what this is what AI I think style is. And she's got a lot of, yep. like sort of minor blemishes on her face. That's incredible. Oh well, yeah, she looks real, right? All right, yeah. let's scroll down. What have you got down there? Okay, it's um, looks like well, drone looks like footage. Western, yeah, yeah, it looks like drone footage, footage of, of um, uh, Alabama the Wild in West. the 1850s or 1820s or something. <laughs> so, a long time ago, I had this idea that, um, well, my idea went a bit further. My idea was trying to figure out if we could work out everything from the current time, as in from the present. Yeah, we can extrapolate the yeah, entire yeah. past into some format which I can consume. Right. Yes. And I thought, yes. wouldn't it be cool if I could be there, you know, let's say as an example, in the crowd when Hendrix was with the band, mm. Band of Gypsies, mm. and be there during those New Year's Eve celebrations in 69, right? So now with AI, I could literally mm. say, p- make the video of Hendrix singing at the Fillmore in whatever fucking year it was, and mm. it should it – should, have a pretty fucking good crack at it. That's that's my thinking on it. Um, and it's scary. Mm. That whole website is filled with videos. Of, this website, yeah, of yeah. of all okay. AI all AI created stuff. That's really Sometimes cool. I can tell when it's AI, but it's super rare to to be able to tell. Isn't it just? Um, do you reckon deep fakes are going to play a have an effect on the US election? I think. They um, I don't know well, how to deal with them. The thing is, is that people are uh, pretty aware of where the technology's at. Um, but yeah, some people. I remember are, when the deep fake stuff first started happening. Yeah. I just thought, well, 
unless I see a side profile shot and a front profile shot of the guy of sorry, sorry, I saw a profile meeting his side of his face and the front of his face, I can't trust anything I ever see or hear from ever, from yeah, now on. That, know, that's, that's what, what I say. thought. That, that's yeah, what I thought yeah, yeah. ten years ago. Right. Now we're at the point where they can do that mm, okay. way better. So how do we and, know? How, what's going to happen? How are we going to know? Well, that? most of these forms of AI to create video and things like that, most of these AI driven um, video effects sort of stuff is it's not watermarked, but they can have, they can put detection software mm. made saying, by the I'm creators be to be able proven. to figure out if mm. it can be mm. defect. Mm. It's not going to stop someone from believing something yes, yes. that they have seen They put it because out there. it will be their person's face. It won't yeah. you know, be compelling. That's going to be compelling for whoever sees there'll it. There'll be a lot of news stories in the future of, okay, so yesterday we reported that this guy said this turns out, we I got know. done. That's what we I'm got duped. Yep. So bad. Yep. So sorry. Um, he didn't say that. And well, do you know news, about news um, agencies do this now where they'll drop the story and then they'll put the apology in later and no one gives a fuck. It's out there already. It's, it's, yeah, it's like the, the damage impact. is done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, so the, the story gets a million clicks. The apology gets 15. 100,000. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or 15. You won't even feel No one even cares. Shit. People like, yeah. almost expect it. Yeah. Yeah, I've been wondering. I think the deep fakes are going to be a, a real issue, and I don't. You're always going to have to fact check. Not well, there's websites. Going this, but. There's websites I can just type a, a phrase in and get it put into the um, sort of the character from Rick and Morty, so I can make a Rick voice. I just awesome. type it in, and it, and it says it. You, there'll be a Biden one. There'll be a Biden one. There'll be a Trump yeah, one. Yeah. You can put your money on that. And so, no, it's going to be very tricky to know what is and what isn't real unless you see it, which so, is so scary. It's so scary. And I think you Because it to used check. to be the time. We, we lived through a period where it was like if you didn't see it, you know, you don't really believe it. Yeah. Then we went to a time where, no, oh, no, we see everything now because everyone's got a phone camera in their pocket. So we see everything now. That's what we think. And now it's like we see everything, but we see everything plus – this new everything, yes. which is all the AI stuff. All the bullshit as well as the real. Yeah. yeah. So much stuff. Stuff's incredi- incredible though. The prompt, tour of an art gallery with many beautiful works of art in different Pretty vague. And it, and it did a good job. Pretty vague. If you, th- There's a left and a right to those videos. So you can scroll left and right, I believe. Um, I don't know how. Oh, yeah, one of eight. So you can oh, scroll through them. There's one of a construction site. And that one makes me laugh because you watch this forklift do this incredible maneuver that's not possible. Um, oh, okay, okay. It's in the tab. Which tab's it in? I think it's in the bottom tab. Where the guy's on a uh, treadmill? Nah. It's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't know they did yeah. this. So we don't this have is this. New. You can't this use new. this technology. Nah, this is, this is nah, just this is an out yet. Yeah. Will this be this released? Is an hour, yeah. yeah, this will be public sooner or later. This will be public. And, and so you could essentially create entire movie projects in this, I reckon, Definitely. from start to Man, finish. So when will we get an AI-generated movie? Oh, any day. Any I think day, it's already right? happened to some extent. But I want to see an AI film studio operate. I want to see an AI writer write a movie an AI screenplay guy write mm. the screenplay, yeah. an AI cinematographer pick all the shots, an AI director yeah. directing the action, yeah. AI yeah. actors acting their parts, AI editors editing the final picture, and then the reveal, the movie. That's, the, that's what I want to see. Yeah. I want to know what they come up with as well. I want it trained on cinema, yeah. Yeah. let's say. Yeah. We'll train yeah. it on cinema. Different and inputs we'll and algorithms for each yeah. of the um, each sure each or just hive them. mind that sucker and do it all as one. It's fine. Just hive mind it. One AI does the lot, <laughs> but that's the future of entertainment as I see it. Is a website where you can literally type in anything you want. Mm. You want Al Pacino playing Batman mm. in in a detective noir story from the nineteen thirties with the Riddler being played by Arnold Schwarzenegger and it just spits it out and have a great night. <laughs> I've got oh. a re- I'm scared for real movies. I'm scared I for know, actual movies. I'm scared for the movie business. 
there's a shot in that lady walking down that Tokyo street where the camera would be right in the reflection of her sunglasses, but it isn't. There's no camera there. Uh, of course yeah, there's no camera there. there's no camera there. It's fantastic. It's scary. Yeah, okay, this one. The prompt is the story of a robot's life in a cyberpunk setting. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? It's very fun. We are I'm living scared. in a crazy time, man. This it's is, been crazy the whole time. This is crazier, though. The rate of development. We've gone from Pong to this. Uh, yeah, no, fair point. Pong to this, this, this rate of, uh, this is why, this is why AI. This is why the black holes out there are all man-made or human-made or, no, sorry, created. AI, you know, yeah, or, or maybe AI would be too artificial. smart. Maybe, maybe AI <laughs> wouldn't make that mistake or maybe it would, I don't think it would have the, the ego to create a black hole. You know what I mean? Maybe right. only you need a, a man to create that. Only a man would have the, um, the dare and the stupidity to do so. I think we were all pretty scared when they fired up the Hadron for the first time that we all thought that there were people out there like myself who thought, if you bash the atoms together, won't you create another universe and then we're all botched? Like, aren't you going to blow us all up? Hmm. It was a legit concern for people who didn't know what the hell was going on. I still don't know what's going on in there. I know they're shooting particles at each other at high speed around two country lines. You know, they want to build a bigger one. Have you heard yeah, that? Yeah. They want to build a bigger one. This is what humans do. We to, always to go want harder. A bigger they want to go faster. One. Yeah. They want it. They think. They think smashing them together faster will be better. Till when? To what end? Till we've got the earth, the whole Earth. So, you know, the whole Earth's circumference is a big collider. Is that where this is going to end up? Oh my god! There's your black hole. Hey, um, you were talking about The Last of Us. Um, you haven't watched it though, have you? The Last of Us? No. There's another one based off the Halo game series. Oh, okay. It's called Halo. Creative. I heard it was shit. Other people have told me it's good. Mixed reviews. I did play I did play yeah. the game. Yeah. Okay. So I should I be into I it. But yeah. I'm not into it. Yeah. No, but it's but going actually I like so, it. No, but you've played no, the game. I want to watch. I'm thinking about watching it. Yeah, what did you think of the game? I liked one and two, okay. but then I didn't like it after that. Yeah, is that standard? That's standard for games, right? They just start churning them out, except for GTA. Well, it's a pretty beloved series by a lot of people, and there's not many people who dropped off the Halo series. Really? Okay. Is a lot it, of people stuck with to, it. Battlefield kind of went down that path, didn't it? Battlefield kind of deteriorated. Yeah, after they're a up couple. to Battlefield a million. They're still yeah, going. Yeah. They're still going. Okay, so you liked Halo one and two, but and you've watched the TV show? No, nah, I'm going to watch the TV show. Should I watch oh, mixed reviews? No, I'll wait for your review. And well, if the I thing didn't play is, the is game, the, then, you know. I don't think that matters for most of these things. Like The Witcher, it didn't matter. You don't have to play The Witcher games to like The Witcher show. It didn't matter for The Last of Us. Those Pretty much great, no yeah. one played yeah. that game who liked that show. That's not true. Mortal Kombat, everyone loved that. Okay. Street Fighter. Australia's own Nicole Kidman. Hey, you mentioned Fillmore. Uh, Jimi yeah. Hendrix playing at Fillmore. Mm. Was that a? I've heard it. That came up in the book I was reading the other day. So that is a, a very popular venue in the sixties, was it not? Yes, it was. Was it the venue? Where? Where's? Where is Fillmore? Oh, is that in Chicago? Maybe. It's, if there's like Fillmore West and or there's East Fillmore or something. East. Yeah, I, I heard Fillmore East. So Fillmore West is a historic rock venue, California. Oh, um, so there's one in California, one on the so that's ah, the West so Coast. Yeah, so there'd be the a East New Coast. York one, right? So the other one might be in New York. Okay. Um, Fillmore East. Because remember how uh, I Yeah, said- so the other one's in Manhattan. So, yes, that makes sense. Okay. Because you know how I was listening to Grateful Dead in the car? When you yeah, yeah, yeah. On the weekend. They would have played on. They would have played there. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's this guy. So it's a, um, it came from a book called An Anthropologist on Mars and it's by um, a doctor called Oliver Sacks. And I'm not going to go into the book, but one of the chapters is about this bloke who was born in around, I don't know, 55 and he was a, 
he was like in I guess or maybe it was uh, anyway he was in his you know late teens early 20s when he saw Grateful Dead at Fillmore East in the mid to late 60s when they were sort of in their peak yeah sure and I didn't know anything about the Grateful Dead sounds like you know a bit more about them they were like the um quintessential hippie band yeah they had big beards uh, flower power, all that stuff. A lot of, you know, the drug-taking culture. Sure. Or drug culture, should I just say. And there's the story is essentially about this guy who was right into the Grateful Dead, saw him there, and then he started going quiet because he got caught up in all that sort of hippie stuff. He got right into um, sort of meditation and things like that, and he started to practice at a uh, the Harry Krishna movement. It was apparently linked with that that whole hippie okay. thing. He sort of went a bit Harry Krishna kind of thing. And he sure. was at a some kind of religious type institution or whatever. And he was right into it. Anyway, his parents were like, okay, he's right into it. Then yeah, I'm going to tell this guy what to do, whatever. He's into meditation and stuff. And then he moved down to um, Florida into like a compound and just started going real hard at it. And he never, he started, he stopped communicating with his parents. And one of his parents got really sick. So about four years later, they hadn't heard from him and they were a bit worried about him. So they're like, look, we're just going to go visit him. When they turned out, when they turned up, he was a completely different person. He was really overweight and he didn't really, he couldn't really communicate properly. What had happened is he got a tumour in his brain and it started growing and it started replacing his frontal lobe. Oh, right. They thought, the people in the religious compound thought that he was just getting really good at meditation and that he'd achieved spiritual enlightenment because he was just so not with it anymore. And your frontal lobe is, they call it like your CEO of your brain. It's the thing making decisions. It's the thing processing. You get all these, you know, all the inputs are coming right. in and it's deciding what of those inputs I'm going to. Yeah, that's crazy. It was, and they, so they were obviously really upset. It was irreversible, the damage that this guy had suffered. But He's stuck in the past. He loves Grateful Dead and he remember he talks about the time he saw them at Fillmore East. Yeah. Like it was yesterday, but it was, you know, it's 10 years later kind of thing and he doesn't mm. know anything that's happened in the last so four years. He, he gets completely locked and the guy keeps on living um, his normal life. Although, you know, he can't work or anything. He's, he's like semi, he's a bit vegetable-y. Uh, it was just it was a really crazy story. And then this doctor, Oliver Sacks, takes him to see Grateful Dead uh, at a concert in, I don't know if it's, I don't know how long Grateful Dead kept playing. And some of the newest, some of the old songs he knew and it's it really stimulated him because it sort of accessed a part of the brain that he still has, all that, all the memory mm. and he was yep. singing along and loved it and he became very engaged and it was almost like he was a normal person again because mm, he could amazing. almost work in autopilot drawing and all that that deep it's amazing those deep memories but then the newer stuff he was really confused by of course because he just had yeah. it, that that those memories had, yeah, yeah they don't never, exist never been created he just got locked in the past it's terrifying mm. so each chapter of this book contains different uh, like sort of unusual people that have weird brain states or weird things that have gone on with their brains and there's some pretty mm. hectic stuff in there. Of course. And savants and things like that. Mm. There's this dude that can, he's he can't really do anything else normally but he can just draw like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, yeah, I've seen these before. Oh my god! So, what accuracy are we talking? Are we just talking accuracy? Or yeah, he'll look incredible. At one, he'll or? look at like the yep. the New York New York skyline. Yeah, and all the windows will be the correct numbers. He'll draw it, but from memory. Yeah, it's crazy. His name's uh, Stephen Wiltshire or something. We'll put up a photo of of or a panorama of some of the stuff mm, he's done. The crazy. New York skyline. It's unbelievable. It's cool. Um, I have got that album Band of Gypsies in my collection, which yeah. was 
recorded January 1st, 1970. So New Year's Eve, 69 at the Fillmore East in New York City. Um, gnarly. So when did, how old, when did Jimi Hendrix die? What year? Well, he died in he died in 1970. He died the he same died year. In, oh, okay. In seven, okay, geez, where he was at his absolute peak, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, he was 27 years old. Yeah. Yeah, it's brutal. I wonder where he would have gone. What, what kind of yeah, the artists of probably old, like Willie like Nelson. The Beatles, you reckon <laughs> you ended up in <laughs> Santana? You know, playing with like Rob Thomas or something. You know. It's a, Jimmy it's Hendrix. a real shame when Jimmy Hendrix gets cut with off like uh, that. you know Jimmy Hendrix with Taylor Swift. <laughs> that sounds like an AI video. Yeah, I mean, Ready well, he was go. born in 1940 ish, so it's conceivable that he'd still be alive today. He might be in his 80s. Might be a bit of a Paul McCartney walking around. But yeah, Paul McCartney worked with Taylor Swift. Hendrix would have done it too. Yeah, surely. Oh, T Swift. Well, the, who's she going to – I mean, she hasn't – has she made a um, – has she come out and said who she's voting for in the election? I mean, she's worth a few percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, the the people T know Swift who she's factor. voting for. Yeah. Oh, do they? Yeah. Who's she voting for? Well, she, won't, she she's not a Trump voter, that's for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought so. I can't see her coming out and supporting Trump. It's a two-party system. You have to vote for one of us. Oh, yeah? Well, I might just vote for a third party. Go ahead. Throw away your vote. But that's the situation in the US. It's perfect. It's perfect, isn't it? Well, yeah. RFK, is he, is he on all the ballots? He was running as a – he was trying to get on the Democratic ticket before. Yeah, but he's running as an independent, isn't he? He's running as an independent. Which is, is suicide, but – Apparently, he's got a lot of traction. Yeah, I mean, sure. Because I reckon John if, Stewart um, would have a pretty good shot. If Trump can't run. The way that the news talks about RFK that, they, they'll, mention be, that yeah. they'll mention that story in the same breath as saying he's definitely going to be the nominee and he'll yeah, definitely yeah, run yeah, against yeah, Biden yeah. in the election. Mm. Um, I think the right uh, now he can't run right right now. No, no, no. That's a state by state thing. Yeah, but you have to be on the ballot in every state to be able to run for the presidency. That's my understanding. I don't think I don't think you do. And I think your name would still appear on the ballot even in states that have uh, taken your name off the ballot. It's a very weird thing in America. America's strange. It was in the Colorado High Court. High court today, I'm pretty sure. Oh, is it? Yeah. This is why I'm so confused because I thought as it stands, he can't yeah. run. But then they keep talking about, the, they say it's almost like a, a matter of course that he'll be running against Biden. I'm like, why That's they, what I mean. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, why aren't they covering And the- Nikki Haley had her first win today. She won the primary in um, DC. Did she? So she won in District of Columbia. But that was always, that's kind of her home territory, even though her home state, she lost that. DC is kind of her unofficial home, like, and it's a bit more mm. uh, less conservative, let's say. So you get this sort of the the middle ground. Um, so she did well there. She had her first win. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that's been uh, what Trump's got to say about that on Truth Social. Haven't seen anything about it. <laughs> you instantly load up Truth Social. <laughs> Because I saw that he kept crapping on about how much he was shitting on her in every, uh, what do, what do you call it, like by-election or whatever, every state, whatever's going on there. He was going on constantly saying how he was just, you know, smashing her everywhere. But no, it's all quiet on the Western Front. Oh, here we go. I purposely stayed away from the DC vote because it is the swamp with very few delegates and no upside. <laughs> Bird Brain <laughs> spent all of her time, money, and effort there. Over the weekend, we won Missouri, Bird Brain, Idaho, and Michigan. Big numbers. Complete destruction of a very weak opponent. The really big numbers will come on Super Tuesday. Also, way up on Crooked Joe. Fuck. He's, he's something else. 
Sorry, I've got some more here. She, he doesn't use her name. I see why. Okay, so Bird Brain is a loser. Record low performance in virtually every state. DeSantis, why is it DeSantis? I thought it was DeSantis. Uh, maybe that's how you pronounce it. Maybe that's how you spell it. DeSantis easily beat her in Iowa for a very distant second place. And then she ran up to the podium before he had a chance to do so and claim the victory. I, w- I enjoy watching the bird disavow her pledge to the RNC and her statement that she would never run against President Trump, in brackets, a great president. Close your brackets. <laughs> Well, she ran, she lied, and she lost big. Oh, my God. That is why I signed up to Truth Social. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's out of control. So he, st- he clearly started his own social media platform so he could just say whatever the fuck he wanted. True. True. And also in response to people getting banned from Twitter and stuff, he yes. was like, oh, yes. come on over. I won't ban you. <laughs> but, I mean, that's moderated, right? No, that's not yeah, a free-for-all. I, I no, no, of course. Like, you can't legally do that, right? Yeah, yeah. I have no idea, though. No idea. You would have a better idea. I just assume it was because I haven't live seen anything it. too. Um, <laughs> but to be honest, I only follow the ones they recommended for me. Uh, yeah, mm. as, as we talk about Trump and Donald Trump Jr. So what I you should do I've never scrolled every, around to see what's going on. What you should do is once a week go and find a post from someone who you are following, like Trump. Yeah. Pick a commenter, a commenter, mm. and be like, I'll follow them. I'll hear I'll hear what this one person has to say. I'll get a and if you add twenty people, right? So we've got twenty people, we'll be able to we'll be able to get this election when it's happening. We'll know. We'll have like inside polls on people. But what do they think about this? Compl- what do they think but about just this? Only the Republican side. Only the yeah. pro 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 Trump. Yeah, well these are the silent people. We need to hear we need to hear their voices. All right, homework. No, they're not. They're not. They're not the silent people. They're actually quite vocal most of the time. <laughs> um, scary times. Scary times. Totally. Absolutely. Um, all I'm hearing is um, China this and China that. that I, don't I know think that's that just goes. because there's a summit going on at the moment and – you know, our deputy prime minister has said stuff like, "This isn't about China." Who's that deputy prime minister? Uh, Richard Mayon. Oh, okay. I never really follow the you know, number two. But- so he he was just saying <clears throat> they're at a conference at the moment. Our, our prime minister's meeting the Malaysian prime minister pretty much right now. They're having a chat about all things. Um, there's some. Um, <clears throat> We've got some people uh, in our region that actually disagree with our position in Ukraine and Israel Mm. on the Israel-Hamas thing. There's like a bit of complexity there where Mm. they won't go after certain things and vice versa. Yeah. Because, yeah, so that's that's something that I heard about. Because I've been in – I was in the car for a couple of hours today. I went went down south to see the folks. Mm. Um. Copped a copped a whole whack of ABC News in my ear brain. Yeah. Okay. Good. Did you see Scomos or hear about Scomos? Uh, they call it a valedictorian valid, valedictory speech. I thought that's what you have when you leave like school or whatever. Anyway, it was his it's last the same thing. Speech. Yes, yeah. Yes. It's, yeah. 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 All, all I could think about when he was leaving was his um him with a ukulele going. Yeah. Take yeah. me to the a. Sun in Cuba. Oh, oh, oh. And then instead of going, take me where the April sun's going to treat me so right, he goes, take me to the April sun in Cuba. Oh, oh, oh. Um, now nah, he's got, he's got, his highlight package is pretty fantastic. I'll you know, whenever, whenever someone leaves yeah. politics, they give him the highlight reel on the way out. And it was him bowling over the kid at the soccer game. Yes, yes. It was him playing April Sun in Cuba and then them coming off the break and someone from Channel 9 saying something. Oh, some, some news reporter said something like, oh, you might have learnt that in Hawaii, which is just such a sick burn. 
Yeah. If yeah, you're, a, yeah. if you're, if you're, you know, you know, you're Australian yeah. politics. Jeez. There was him giving the uh, the shuckers. You know, he had he had some he had some good gaffes. Yes, and so that was during the like if it was holidaying during the the fires, bushfire yeah. crisis. Yeah, and that his quote funny, of I yeah. I don't hold a hose, mate. I don't hold a hose. Is that what he said? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> So you no heard about you his to. final speech. Yeah, exactly. What you, about him doing the uh, – do you remember when he was um, doing the welding and he couldn't see, so he pulls up the welding oh, mask? I forgot about that. That one is a classic. That's the best. Yeah, that's a classic. That's that really one will good. never die. That one's, really that one's the goat. So yeah. in, his, in his speech leaving parliament, his final speech, he gave a big yeah. warning on China. Did he? Yeah. Well, he sounded off. Yeah, he sounded off mic drop, said that the threats to Australia's sovereignty remained real and Australia should not be fooled by Beijing's tactics. He warned of China's continuing tactics to coerce or seek advantage over Australia. I mean, China did. I do remember them. There was a raft of bans, trade bans they had for a while, which I kept hearing about that were... Yeah, hurting you know, Australia. Hurting Australia. But I mean, I don't really think too much about it, but I remember buying a lobster one Christmas because apparently our lobster industry here was just um, shattered because China the had stopped bands. taking yeah, the export bans. And barley was a big one. Apparently barley's a big export of ours and just fucks us over. Wine. Yeah, so one. we're like, turn the tap back on, please. Yeah. <laughs> what I find funny is all this talk about you know, the, the dangers of China and yet it's our biggest trading partner. It's such yeah, an yeah, irony. Of course. of course. You know, the, the talk about the military threat, but then we're like, well, we just really want to, we really want to trade with them. Yeah, no, I think Utopia does it really well. They talk about like, oh, we're protecting our, our mm. shipping lanes mm. from China with China. Mm. Like this is the threat. But that is all that we've got time for. So over again, we will be it? back next yeah. week. So Do it we'll, all again. Mm-hmm. The more good news. Yeah. There'll be more good news, coming. yeah. It will only yeah. do good news next week. Okay, we'll do a good news we week. We won't China threats. Okay, great. Um, hit us up on the email, back here with perspective at mail.com. We do read them. It's just most of them are from the Good News Network. Uh, but we'll see you next time. <laughs>